The Roman Empire throughout its 1000 year reign has become infamous for their terrible emperors and the horror stories that follow them, most commonly thought of as Nero and Caligula. But what if I told you that there is one emperor, even before them, that was even more depraved and sick? It being the second emperor of Rome, Tiberius Caesar Augustus. The stepson of the great emperor Augustus, Tiberius ruled Rome from 14 AD to 37 AD. A military man, he is said to be one of the greatest generals and military minds of Roman history. During the early part of his reign, he was respected and admired for how aptly he ran Rome and helped it prosper. But under this success, his dark core could be seen through the cracks. As he began to age, Tiberius became more paranoid, fearing assassination, as well as an increasingly disapproving view of politics and court life. So in 26 AD, at the age of 67, Tiberius would move to the island Capri, located off the coast of Naples, Italy, where he had pleasure villas throughout the island. And here, in these pleasure villas, is where the elderly Tiberius would commit his horrible, terrible acts. Here in private, Tiberius lived through all his perverted sexual fantasies. Throughout the pleasure villas, he had constructed private baths where he would swim with little children called minnows. They would swim around him nibbling and licking him across his body. But his depravity with these minnows doesn't stop there. For once he got bored of a minnow or he lost favor with them, he would throw them off a thousand foot cliff to their deaths. I mentioned earlier that when people think of horrible emperors, many times Caligula is the first to come to mind. But what if I told you that he learned his perversions from Tiberius, his grandfather? Actually, Caligula grew up and was raised on Capri with him. He himself was one of Tiberius's many minnows. Following the death of Tiberius in 37 AD, which many people believed that Caligula had something to do with it, he would send for the surviving minnows, and rather than giving them their freedom, he would drown and kill them all. This is just one example of Tiberius's sexual fantasies. Suetonius writes about how he brought in experts of sex of both genders to Capri for orgies and to please him, how he owned an erotic library so he could experiment, as well as owning a plethora of sexual paintings and statues that was located throughout all his pleasure villas. He would create in the gardens of the island a place known as the Ode Goat's Garden, where he would have boys and girls dress up as nymphs and pans and commit sexual acts. He would have his way with any man or woman he desired, of high birth or low birth, and if they try to reject him or speak against him, he would have them killed or horribly injured. His islands of pleasures and horrors would be his home for 11 years until his death in 37 AD, and when full knowledge of what he was getting up to on Capri reached the public, it shook the foundation of Roman beliefs. See, Rome didn't have a problem with pedophilia for the most part, as sex with slaves happened often and many times slaves were purchased as young children. But this practice was not something an emperor, the highest power in Rome, the figurehead of the empire, should be doing. He had already experienced a decline in support from his open dislike of politics, as well as his brusque, dour communication. But with this, his death was not mourned by many. People in the early days of his successor Caligula were actually excited for a new, better emperor. But they would soon discover that Tiberius had gone his claws into Caligula creating a dark, messed up individual who now would have control of the greatest empire in the world.